You're good to go. Okay, I want to welcome everyone to uh, the June 28th special meeting of the MCS Board of Directors. Um, I do have some pre-submitted public comments that we'll go through tonight. Before I do that, I just, as I often do, want to just review sort of the basics of our public comment policy. Um, public comments, uh, if intended to uh, criticize, should be focused on school or board operations uh, and not on individuals. Um, public meeting law and our own policies do require that complaints leveled against individuals are handled via our complaint policy. Um, let's try to keep everything civil, no yelling, ideally. Uh, and what we'll, as is historically been our practice, we'll limit public comments uh, to three minutes each. Um, just as a matter of uh, you know, to clarify the the board, our policy does allow for the board to respond to public comments, but does not require the board to respond on the spot. Um, generally speaking, public comments are read and uh, and not necessarily responded to on the spot. Um, with that said, we'll go ahead and start, and I'd like to invite uh, Greg Deerholt to read his public comments submitted to me earlier today. Are you Thank ready? you, Chad. Yeah. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. It is muted. Just real briefly, one thing I forgot. I've asked uh, Julia, board member Julia, to um, be our sort of unofficial timekeeper. Um, not just for public comment, but just for the meeting in general, just to keep things moving. Thank you, Julia, for being willing to do that. All right, Greg, I'll turn things over to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting feedback for some reason. Turn off your... Uh... I'll talk. Take your computer out of here, please. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, audio problems there. MCS academic year has ended with the school in chaos and a community divided, and that includes the school. Bernadine resigned as business manager. Executive Director Janet Carter may have a contract offered to her after 20 years as an exemplary employee and competent ED. Keeping these two administrative positions intact is critical and they're being lost due to poor board leadership. My stake in this discussion is I worked as a business leader and manager for 23 years. During that time, I've received extensive leadership management and emotional intelligence training. Personally, my entire family has been involved either through being educated or on staff at the school. My concerns, all board meetings are held using Zoom. Zoom meetings lack collaboration, teamwork building, effective conversations, especially when solving complex issues. Speakers have been muted if their viewpoints are not welcomed as per last board meeting. Public or staff concerns are mishandled. In several instances, the administration was not given the complaint to manage first. Problems or complaints quickly escalate and immediately fingers are pointed. The next step is the kangaroo court oil tribunal. Would you work under these conditions? The administration was not given the opportunity to have a discussion with the board chair individually or rectify the complaint with the plaintiff simply put on trial. Due to the above actions, the complaints escalate into full scale controversies versus being handled efficiently. We are living that nightmare today. Since the beginning of the 2023 school year, the administration has requested numerous times to have regular meetings with the board chair, all ignored. There's been no goal setting, performance planning with the administration. Only one administration review taking place May, 2023 has taken place and that was sent via email. No discussion, problem solving such subsequent goal setting based on this review has taken place. As a result, the board, has no idea of the day-to-day -day workings of the school, the internal politics or the enormity of the tasks the administration has to solve, nor do they have the grasp of where the operational difficulties or internal cancers lie. There's been no board governance or policy training. Handing out a board manual is not training. New board members are not onboarded. The result is board members who are untrained likely improperly handling school matters internally and with the community. 
While I was on the facilities committee, the command and control style was used. Team discussions were stymied with no room for discussion. This is not management. This is simply being a boss. The school needs trained professional leadership with strong, knowledgeable board members that consider all stakeholders with no preferential treatment for one. The Craig, state of school today is Craig, clearly due to a leadership that, void. I recommend yeah. leadership be changed with more suited personnel who possess the time, skills, and aptitude to govern MCS successfully. I have more specific concerns while I make known, known in a formal complaint. In community, Greg Deerholt. Thank you, Greg. I'm gonna try to hold up. Uh, I tried, sorry, it's kind of blurry, but when I hold up my paper, it's your one minute warning. And I'll try to um, take the blurry off so you can see it. Thank you, Thank Carol. You. Thank you, Julia. Um, our next public comment is from uh, community member, Carol Deerholt. Carol, I'll turn things over to you. I'm, I'm re, uh, resituating because my computer was too close. Uh, okay, public comment, Carol Deerholt, June 28th, 2023. Many of us in the community have worked extremely hard for 24 years to create MCS, and I'm asking the staff first to think about this and not about grievances that could be solved if you choose to work together with the administration. Please work hard to solve your differences for the benefit of the whole school. Without Janet, our school will be unstable and vulnerable. Please don't risk the stability of our school, but please do put effort into resolving challenges. It's the job of the staff, the board, and the community to work together to support the mission of the school. Community members have a great stake in the school, and I really hope the staff does too. Please work through grievances and learn to work together next year. Leadership on the board. The board needs new leadership, which supports the ED and the core values of the school. I have not seen this in leadership this year. I'm disappointed to see the board spending school funds on legal fees, much energy has been spent in the last few months on extending problems rather than actively solving them. Again, the board needs new leadership who works strongly to build and strengthen the school and not to tear it apart. The board has not had any training for at least three years, which competent leadership would have provided. Losing the business manager as a direct result to board behavior is unacceptable. Janet has made a major contribution to MCS, which many, many students have benefited from now let us have the benefit of that experience for just one more year. Board, I know you are being hammered by both sides, but there are more school employees telling you they appreciate working with Janet than the actual few who say they don't. Not everyone on any team will like their boss, but that's not worth wrecking a school over. Without Bernadine, her incredible knowledge of not just the mere budget, but the grants, human resources, facilities will all be in jeopardy. Without Janet, you will have a substitute principal at best, or no leader, a negative impact on learning growth for students, no development of multi-age, and leave a rudderless ship of staff members. Janet is retiring in June 24. Plan now for a positive transition. If Janet has a contract, if board leadership changes, Bernadine may consider returning. Please consider the long-term stability of the school and put the school back to work. I leave you with three recommendations. Do the right thing by changing the board leadership. Put the whole school first. Staff, do the right thing. Agree to work with Janet for one more year. Please put the students and the school first and learn to work together. Board, do the right thing. Stabilize MCS with Janet and Bernadine and allow for a steady progressive transitional year. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, I have a submission from a number of community members that I'll now read uh, that was given to me uh, to read as a public comment. June 28, 2023, dear Chair Watson and members of the Mosier Community School Board. We are writing as concerned parents and community members to express how proud we are of Mosier Community School, thanks to decades of hard work by teachers, staff, the board and school volunteers. However, we are deeply concerned about any action by the board of directors that would leave MCS without a qualified and professional principal for next year. Many of us know and respect Janet Carter through her work as a teacher, a principal, 
and Moser community member for over 20 years. Others of us, however, may not know her personally, but simply care about MCS and want to see it thrive. What we share in common, however, is the belief that not renewing Principal Carter's contract and bringing in a substitute principal for the 23-24 school year would pose a significant risk to MCS and its students. History has shown and has been difficult to find good leadership. A substitute or interim principal would likely be from outside the community, have no knowledge of MCS students or operations, and as a short timer, would have little incentive or capacity to build on MCS progress. While MCS strong reputation has meant that parents want to send their kids to MCS, having long, a year long leadership vacuum could undermine MCS reputation and parents trust. Having an experienced principal who's dedicated to Moser School and its students is especially important given the serious safety threat that recently shut down the school for multiple days and now requires an armed guard on school grounds. Additionally, the recent resignation of MCS business manager who plays a key role in school operations would exacerbate the impact of running the school with a temporary substitute principal that lack knowledge of MCS operations. We greatly appreciate your work as a volunteer school board and your consideration of these comments. Sincerely, and there's uh, 52 names on the signature on, on, the, on the letter. Um, the board members all have the letter. I think it was sent here earlier, so I'm not gonna read all 52 names. Um, The next public comment I have is from board member uh, Cindy Camp. Cindy's not in our meeting tonight. <clears throat> I wanted to take this time to say how much I have enjoyed being on the Mosier Community School Board in the last three years. During that time, I was able to learn so much, participate in many projects, all while meeting some great people and gaining a couple of friendships that I hope will last a long time. This year has been the hardest by far, but my decision to resign from the MCS board has nothing to do with that. I have had many conversations with our board chair, Dan Watson, for quite some time, letting him know that I would be leaving the board on June 14th, 2023, to focus more on my family, my health, and both of my businesses. I know that the board is a very strong unit and will rise to any challenge it faces. I have confidence in each and every one on the board that any and all decisions will be made, will be done with Mosier Community School's best interest in mind. The amount of dedication and time members have put in is overwhelming and that should not be overlooked or unnoticed. I wish everyone the best and I will still see you around Mosier Community School for at least one more year. Thank you, Cindy Camp. Final public comment tonight is from board member uh, Leah mock -Yubotic. This past year has been an overwhelming educational privilege. I've enjoyed learning all the complexities that go into the functioning of a school. I have even more esteem for those who choose to work in the school system and to help raise our children. I wanted to continue volunteering. However, the last few months of board work has caused an anxiety too great for me to cope with and is jeopardizing my ability to provide for my family and be present for my children. This was an extremely hard decision for me to make. Stepping down is the right decision for my health and for my family. Everyone in this community wants Mosier Community School to thrive. The board members I've gotten to know over the last year have proved to be outstanding community members, given their time and care to champion the school and keep it moving forward. There have been large stumbling blocks this year in particular, and major challenges from the past number of years that every school was dealing with. I believe there's been a breakdown of communication within the school, but I know that it can be mended with time and understanding. I have complete confidence that the board, staff members, teachers, students, and their families have the capacity to pause, listen to each other and find common ground. Mosier Community School has shown itself to be resilient. With everyone's effort, it will continue to be uh, the place of growth and nurturing we've all benefited from. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone for caring and being involved in doing their best for MCS. Thank you, board member Leah mock -Ibotic. That completes the uh, public comments. Uh, for tonight's meeting. Our next agenda item uh, is an executive session. Uh, actually, the next agenda item is changes to an approval of the agenda. Um, I'd, I'd like to move that we add an agenda item immediately after agenda item number five, which is election of board officers, to um, in light of uh, the two resignations and subsequently vacated board positions that we add an agenda item to approve the process for accepting applications to appoint uh, new board members as per our bylaws. Do we have a second on that? 
Dan, uh, all in favor of adding that item immediately following election of officers? If anyone's opposed to that, please verbalize your opposition. Okay, are there any other proposed changes to the agenda on that one? All right, then we'll move into executive session, our first executive session of tonight's meeting under uh, ORS 192.660.2b to consider the dismissal or disciplining of or to hear complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual agent who does not request an open hearing. Um, for those of you in the public meeting, you can stay on this link. Uh, the, the board will adjourn to executive session, which is a different link, uh, and then come back to this link um, when we're finished with that exec session to continue with the public portion of the agenda. Uh, board members, I think you all should have the executive session link and I'll see you over there. <laughs>